All right, guys, welcome back to another KevCam Night class tonight. Uh, tonight, I have Tim Micah helping out with any questions or concerns that come up along the way for you guys. Tim, are you with us? Yep, good evening, everybody. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for joining the night class tonight. Um, for those that are new, I don't see any names out of the uh, out of the norm here, so I'm not going to go through the same rigmarole as normal with the uh, go-to meeting. Um, but uh, you guys, I will bring this one up for you. Is you guys have your ideas, send those over to me, and uh, we will definitely get those implemented in right away for you guys. Um, send you a free hat and t-shirt and Sorry, it is one size. It fits many, maybe you could say. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we don't have small or mediums, but uh, we do have large and extra large. But all right, and I won't put, bother putting my email address in there because I know all you guys have my email address. And well, I'll put it in there just in case we get some late uh, comers in here. So, um, so tonight is going to be another short night class tonight. Um, just covering just simplified cutoff, um, parting off your tool. Um, real easy to use, very basic, um, simple as I think it, it gets. But um, so we'll kind of continue on from our part that uh, we did last week with the angle grooving here. Um, and so what we'll do is just go into our cutoff. And now, so basically what I want to do is I want to be able to cut this you know, I got my stock uh, being chucked up right here. Um, and let me get a side view again here. Got my chuck being, or uh, we're chucked up along the stock right here and basically just want to cut off my uh, um, my my part that it's done so I can run the finish shot, the uh, uh, second op on the second side here. So we can just go to cut off right here, grab our geometry. We'll just grab that single line right there from our and stock envelope or our target envelope that it created. We'll do a modified geometry and it's defaulted to the start of the stock, but I want to go to the, the end of the stock. So I'm just going to do auto end. So it goes right to the center point for us. And we'll grab a tool. Now, one thing I want to kind of go over right now is um, we had a, uh, attendee last week asked about doing a cutoff tool in the Y direction. Now we're always going, cutting off a tool in the X direction. And I want to show you guys this. Um, and I'm not sure how well this is going to convey across, but what I'll, I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a link to this video too, but let me just play this through here, turn the sound down. And uh, Iskar has come out with a new cutter that is solely meant to cut just in the Y axis direction only. Um, we can do that inside solid cam. So you can see they say on the left, the conventional way, um, and then they have their new parting tool uh, cutting in the Y direction. Um, this can be done inside solid cam. And the only thing we need to do is change around our working plane. Um, but this is something new. So this is only gonna work on your Integrex machines, your, your your multi-axis kind of head machines um, right now with the uh, the mill turn side of things. And for those of you guys that want this link, I'll put it in the uh, chat message for you guys to see if it didn't come. Well, Tim, how did it look on your end? Did it come across? Sorry, sorry, I was muted. It it, it was it was fairly decent. Okay. Um. So. With that being said, what you'll do is, let me just bring up a, uh, a screenshot they have right here. It's gonna be this turning plane rotation, and that's gonna be right here. Now this is gonna be grayed out or not even showing up depending on the post that you're using. So for this one right here, I'm just using a standard Haas uh, ST20Y. Um, but as soon as I go to pick that tool, this turning plane will actually disappear just because my post is not set up for that. Um, so what we're working on is with development to get that uh, that new feature put in there uh, for those of you guys that would like this enabled and then you guys don't have, you know, a multi-axis machine for a mill turn. Um, and that way we can do that in there. But um, just wanted to kind of go over that because that was a talking subject of last week's class and uh, that it can be done 
for you guys. And um, he was that customer was running a uh, Integrax machine, so he was able to implement that in. But uh, kind of got to stay on the latest greatest stuff out there, I guess, because I didn't even know that uh, Iskar had that cutter out there. Okay, so grab our cutoff tool right here, and all it is just uh, pretty much copied my grooving tool and. Uh, put it back to zero degrees right here. So just doing a standard cutoff tool here, a um, little bit of a radius on there, um, but nothing out of the ordinary here. And you'll see that that working plane completely disappeared. Um, and like I said, that's all post driven for you guys. So levels is safety distance. Um, same as what we've been going through the entire turning project here. Uh, if you guys wanna add a custom one in there, you can. Now to get to the good stuff. Okay, so um, in here, oh, one thing I wanted to show. This is a little bit off subject, but I think I'd, I think you guys would like this. Um, had a customer call in, and when he gets into his mounting, uh, he had probably 20 different tools in there, and he was having a hard time seeing which tool he was working with. Now, inside the mounting, um, it does highlight in blue for you, but like it's, you know, he was saying that there's so many tools in there that uh, it's really hard to see uh, where everything is at and where his current tool that he has selected is at. So what you guys can do is come up here and click the hide all tools. And that's gonna get rid of all your tools that are in there. Um, so you can just focus on that one tool by itself. Um, if you guys want, you guys can hide the text. Um, you guys can actually hide the, coordinate system for that one. It's gonna keep the main coordinate system of the spindle of the machine so you can kind of get a good um, view of what's going on there. But so you guys do have those options. If you guys do have get a lot of tools in there and you need to start rotating your tools around, definitely click the, uh, the hide all tools uh, button so you can just focus on that one right here and move it around and kind of see where everything is located at. Um, another thing that I told them to do is turn on this feature right here and you guys can get a good orientation view of of how that cutter is gonna look cutting through there. So a little off subject there, but i to throw that in there for you guys. Okay, so we're doing a um, external or internal. Um, so for this one, we'll be doing an external cutoff. And 99% of the time, it will default to the correct one for you guys. Um, but every once in a while, um, you'll have to manually click it over for you. Now, do you want to do tool side left, middle, or right? So we'll do it on left. Right here, do you guys want to do it all in one cut, or do you want to do it in a constant? Um, just to kind of show you the difference here, let's just do save and calculate. Let's do a simulate, turning. Come down, straight cut off, and it's going to retract right back out. So we're not pecking down into this material at all but we do have the option for that. So what we can do is do uh, a constant. So it's constantly moving down 40 thou. Um, nice thing too is you guys have a couple different options with your retreat distance. So right now it's gonna retreat, um, I'm just gonna put this same as our uh, step down, so 40 thou. So let's just save and calculate and see what that's gonna give us here. So it's gonna peck down and retreat or retract 40 thou for each peck. This is basically what's going on here. Get all the way to the center and we're done. Now you also have the option to do outside. Now this one got a little confusing for me at first. Um, so what it's gonna be doing is it's going to retract outside the part. Um, and I was thinking this is the, the distance that it's gonna retract outside the part. Um, and it's not the case. So let me just kind of show you, and I'll, oops, let me go to turning here. So it's coming outside the part, but we're not, it's not retracting that 40 thou that's there. Well, what it's doing is, it's we're, we're not being able to see it right here, but right after this step, it's gonna go up that 40 thou, and then it's gonna go into a G00 move and retract in a rapid movement up to the, uh, the, the your outside stock right here. Um, so it is it is getting the retracting all the way out, um, but it's not, uh, it's just, it's feeding 40 thou up and then retracting out with the rapid. 
hopefully that makes sense. And if not, let me know because uh, it took a little bit to figure that one out. <laughs> but um, so we're just kind of coming in here, retract 40 thou, and then wrap it out, and then come back down, feed in another 40 thou, feed back out 40 thou, and then retract back out is basically what's going on right here. Okay. So now you guys also have the option to do after your cut, we can do a uh, a retract in the Z. So after your you, you've cut off your part tool, you don't want it to be dragging back over your your stocks. Let's say you're having a bar pull and you want a nice clean face right there, and you don't want it to uh, you know recut or rub against that side. So what you guys can actually do is set that value in here, um, and we can do the Z plus, and you can kind of see what the difference is here. Z negative um, is going to go towards the uh, the spindle, where Z plus is going to go out towards the opposite end of the spindle. So we're going to come down, cut off the part. Um, the part will drop, and then it's going to go over in our Z 40 thou, and then retract back out. So we're not uh, recutting that um, or rubbing as we're coming back out. So let's just take a peek and see what that looks like. Now it's going to look a little bit different uh, in our turning because uh, we, our part's not dropping off into a part sketcher here. So if we get down, last cut, it's going to move over that 40 thou that we specified or a, a larger distance if we like and then come straight back out for us. So like I said, it's not going to show quite right here because you know this part would be dropped off in the, the part sketcher at that point. That way you're not dragging coming back up. All right. So another thing that you guys can do is you guys can set um, an offset. So if you guys want to do a plus or minus offset for your Z, um, kind of like a drive surface offset, um, there's two ways of going about that. The hard way is to physically draw a line in there. And if you needed to offset it over, or what we can come right here is just put a offset value so it's going to actually um, shift it over. So let's say, you know, this part is going into op two right after I cut it off. So maybe I want to leave, you know, 100 or 50 thou on there to come back when I flip it over to the op two side to face it off with a nice cutter and then finish cutting all the way through here. Um, so that's what that option does for you guys. Uh, another nice option in here is we can do on our corners do a chamfer or a fillet. Um, so for this one, we'll do a uh, chamfer. Um, you can choose do you want the left side chamfer, uh, right side chamfer, or both. Uh, so we can do both. And let's just set a 10 thou here. Save and calculate. And what we'll come and do is put that chamfer in there first and start pecking it out like we're we're going. And it's nice to have this chamfer in here because now um, not so much for for this side over, you know, your finished part here. But if you guys are running a bar pole, you have that little radius on here. So you don't have that sharp edge to come on there for that bar pole. You got a nice uh, transition or a radius kind of coming in there. So um Nice little feature that they, they added in there. And like I said, you can do, you know, maybe we just want to do the left side only because that's the only one that really matters for us because we're coming for the second out part here. Um, so we just have a little chamfer over on the left-hand side for that bar pull to, to pull out and keep going for you guys. That is everything. <laughs> Not much here. Uh, under link, you know, you get your approach points. Um, you know, you got your right safety corner as default, but um, you have multiple different ones in here for you guys. But any questions, guys? Because, like I said, this is our kind of our main focus right here. Um, that's the only thing that's really changed in the turning, just since you know we're doing uh, cut off, not angle groove or anything like that. Um, kind of where the guts of everything is here. Any questions? Nothing? So far, no questions. Everybody's pretty quiet. <laughs> All 
All right. Um, yeah, like I said, this one's going to be another, it was uh, another short one here. Um, but if you guys do have questions that come up along the way, definitely let me know. Yeah, <laughs> Greg wrote, uh, pretty cut and dry. Yep, and definitely is. There's uh, not a whole lot to it. Um, there's not a whole lot to the turning period. Um, we're going to get into some more uh, interesting stuff. Uh, the manual turning isn't so interesting, but when we get into eye machining for turning and the balance roughing um, in the, the channel synchronization and all that stuff into the mill turn, it'll get a little bit more interesting. But they've kept it really simplified, easy. Um, so you guys can just come in here, whip out parts real quick and get it out to the machine because we know, you know, if you guys are running a Mazak with Maze Patrol, you guys can get through it pretty quick too, but uh, with this, you're going to be much faster and you're going to be able to see the simulation and all your tooling and all that stuff. So, but all right. Um, so, like I said, next week we will be covering manual turning. Um, and manual turning is exactly what it is. There's not much there, but for those specific moves that you guys need to see in there, um, we'll, we'll do a, a couple or a cutoff. Um, with a custom kind of safety distance in there. Uh, you'll see uh, right here, let me just play this through one more time here. I'll get rid of the single. Save and calculate, simulate, turning. So I wanted to start cutting from up here. Well, I don't have that option. Well, I guess I do. Uh, if we go to geometry, modify geometry, if I do a distance of 100 thou. It's not wanting to extend my distance just because. Let me try something here. Let's see if I can give you guys a good example of why we'd want to do manual turning here. And to the end. Oh, it is going to do it on, on this one. Uh, some of the operations you guys will notice, like um, when we're doing turning uh, for the roughing operation, it's just based off of your stock um, and the updated stock. And if it doesn't see any updated stock there, it's not going to go anything farther past. Um, that's kind of where the manual turning kind of comes into a factor is you guys can set up uh, that those lines or kind of modify the geometry a little bit and it's just going to basically follow that line that you specified that you want it to do so um, if there's something that we can't get through with just our generic uh, operations up here then we can switch over to manual turn and it's just going to do the basics of it so but we'll cover that one next week kind of rambling on here um, but I guess with that being said, I don't see any other questions in here. Um, guys, I just want to thank you for joining the night class tonight. And uh, thanks for, uh, you know, <laughs> being here at, at on a Tuesday night. Um, hopefully you guys are a lot warmer than what it is up in northern Minnesota. It was, uh, it was negative 29 below this morning. So, but uh, Tim's enjoying the nice warm weather, aren't you? Yeah, I'm I'm freezing myself. It's getting down in the 40s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I appreciate so, the guys. Everybody. Uh, oh, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, pre appreciate everybody's uh, business out there and guys coming to the classes. Kevin, great job with doing the classes each week. And, uh, you know, uh, customers let us know what we can do for you. And we appreciate everything. Yeah, and, you know, give me you guys' feedback. And, uh, you know, if you guys... Uh, if you guys want to see something a little bit different changed up, you know, for everybody that I'm seeing in the class right now, um, I know I've talked to all of you guys on the phone through or through email. So don't be afraid to shoot me an email and say, Hey, you know, next time add this in there or something like that. So um, definitely welcome your guys' feedback. And just because this, is, this class is just for you guys for a learning experience. So, and for those of you guys that are watching on YouTube, my email address is in the uh, description of the video. So, and I will put the link 
for that ISCAR tool in the uh, description of the YouTube video portion to it. If any of you guys out there that are currently watching, Carlos, George, you know, all you guys, um, Ronnie, uh, Jeff, you know, let me know and I can email that link to you too um, if you guys don't have it. But okay, so that being said, we'll let you guys go and have a wonderful night. And any questions, concerns come up along the way, shoot me an email or give us a call on the support line. All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you all. Good night. See you guys.